Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 179, recorded December 8th, 2014. Oren Jacob of Toy Talk. Triangulation is brought to you by Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace which connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa prepaid card when you get a loan. And by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash triangulation. And by Smart Things. Smart Things lets you control and monitor your home from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. To get started, visit smartthings.com slash twit and you'll save 10% off any home security or solution kit when you use the code TWIT10 at checkout. It's time for Triangulation. This is the show where we talk to some of the most interesting people in technology, see what they're up to, learn some things. This is going to be fun. I've been, I've been looking uh, forward to this uh, for some time. Oren Jacobs is here from Toy Talk. He's the CEO of Toy Talk. <laughs> but even more, before that, former CTO at Pixar, you were an animator there. How, when did you... Welcome, Oren. It's great to have you on Thank you. Thank you, Leo. Great to be here. And if I had known you were in studio, man, I would have... I don't know what. I would have brought some toys for you, daughter. <laughs> um, do you 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 saw Luxo Junior, the first Pixar short? Right? In, I saw it in high school. In uh, high it school. was on the. If many years ago there was an animation festival called the Mike and Spike Festival that would tour around. Loved that. Right. Used to go to that every year. Yeah. Yep. I, and that I, was where you saw Luxo. Saw Luxo playing at I think it was Crawford Hall, which is the basketball right. arena at UCI. I right. grew up in Irvine. Right. And as a credit crawl went by at the end of Luxo. It says uh, uh, Pixar, Mar and I think all it said was Marin County, California, Yeah. and then a special thanks to Lucasfilm. And, uh, and it stuck with me, and I thought somehow those things probably are connected. Because you were a Star Wars geek, too. Uh, sure. I, I, my mom woke me up to camp out for Empire on sleeping Aww, bags in front of the Newport uh, Theaters at Fashion Island. I still have <laughs> my kids, too. So we, yeah, it's like 3 in the morning. She woke up Donnie and I, and we... Oh, we end so up on fun. sleeping bags, and you know, in the sprinklers, or whatever. And I love your mom. And the sun comes up. We're like, "What the heck are we doing here, mom? Like, it's a school day. It's the opening of Empire." So she was a fan. Like, what Empire? What Empire Strikes Empire. Back? Empire. What? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was the kid who's you know, whatever, 9 a.m. the screening on that Friday morning. I come back. To, it was like in May, so I got the. But you the, didn't see that and say, "I want to animate Jar Jar Binks." No, clearly not. <laughs> no, I think most people probably didn't, but. But I was a kid who came back to class and knew with the dentist's office uh, note and then walked in and said, I'm sorry, I was late to school with the dentist. And Vader's his father! Oh, uh, you class know, like, you Gah! didn't know. I, I'm so sorry to everybody. And, you learned yeah, early I, on that spoilers. I was that guy. That was not a guy had to be. <laughs> anyway, he was a big Star Wars fan, obviously, as, as most people in that generation or our generation were. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but then saw Luxa Jr. with that in the credit crawl. And this sort of guess that Lucasfilm and Pixar were somehow, somehow related. related. Turns yeah. out they're quite related, yeah. um, as we all know now. Um, but it's noted that, and uh, then... Um, this is pre-Steve Jobs. This is when it was a division of Lucas, or...? No, at that point in time, Steve had already purchased it. He'd already Luxo bought it. was released when Steve was the CEO of the right. company. So yes, right. he had already separated Lucas, from Lucasfilm. Lucas has started Pixar as really a tool division, as I remember, wasn't it? Or Yeah, he hired Ed, Ed came to work for Ed George. Ed right. And once Ed was there, then he brought in uh, some of the right. team who are still there today at Pixar. I right. um, think how that But George happened. tired of it, as happens. Yeah, I think there were some... I don't quite understand the financial situation in the mid-'80s in Lucasfilm, because that was post-Jedi, right. but pre-Phantom right. Menace. Right. And you're in the Howard the Duck phase there. There was a bad period. So there that, was a low that point. That could have been complicated, <laughs> perhaps, at that time. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I, I guess that um, he wanted to sell the division off. and uh, Steve you know, picked it up and, at a fire sale price. Y yes, he did. And got the team, uh, uh, the software, and the, the folks. Of interesting side note is that I believe it worked, because they were all intermingled in the Kerner buildings, which I drove by this morning coming up here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I think the folks who went with the Pixar sale um, got to keep the stuff in their office. Because, like, you're in the same building, so, like, you know, Office 1 stayed at Lucasfilm, Office 2 went to Pixar, 3 went to Fort Divin wow. in the ABCD buildings in Kerner. Um, and many years later, um, uh, one of the guys who, I, I think still there, been there for many years, named Neftali, was a model builder 
back in Empire and Jedi, and it came to do computer system repairs. And so when I walked into his office as an intern when I started in 1990, and I see like an X-Wing, a Y-Wing, an actual Falcon, and like an oh. Imperial Star Destroyer, like the Carillion size ship, oh. which in miniature phase is like an eight foot miniature, right. um, sitting on a shelf. Right. I'm like, holy cow, <laughs> what is, <laughs> what's that about? Oh, uh, well, I used to be a model builder back in the day, wow. and I got the, are you kidding me? That's the real. That's the one. Uh, yeah, those, yes, That's for the, And they had the motorized camera go underneath it to make it look like it's coming. Right, super cool. So anyway, oh, that, that was so neat, actually, you know, Touch an actual miniature for That is pretty cool. Anyway, so I started in 1990 at Pixar um, okay. as an intern my freshman year at Cal and worked there for 20 years. Interesting. So, so, so you didn't study graphic design or, I mean, you just, you kind of learned as you, at work. Yeah, I was actually like. a mechanical engineer by degree. And got mechanical back, engineer? Yeah, of all unusual things, yeah. uh, which is, was applicable in a meeting in my life, which was talking about fluid dynamics for splashing water on Nemo. So you need to know that stuff. I threw out some Navier Stokes equations then, and that was useful <laughs> for that particular <laughs> agenda. But um, no, I was, I was studying uh, engineering at Cal and got an internship at Pixar, and then just stayed because I learned my computer graphics and filmmaking there. Um, what a way to learn! There. Yeah, it was uh, that was a very special opportunity. So yeah. once I got that internship, I didn't let it go. No, as much as uh, this, the, the company was not the one we know today as a film studio. Back then, it was still a Steve Jobs-funded hardware and software startup that was selling Pixar image computers, which right. were a quarter million dollar washing machine sized boxes. Right. It was um, about tools. Yep, they were selling, uh, Render Man was already being sold, so that, mm -hmm. uh, which is still sold today by Pixar. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the short films, I think, were mostly done. I mean, I, I know John and Ed wanted to make a f full length animated feature, but um, they were exploring that agenda um, as a way to really test the hardware and the software and show off what they could do. And it was so it's interesting primary. about uh, John Lasseter is he's such an adept storyteller. Yes. That you feel like, well, that must be what he was always there to do. You don't come across a generational talent like that very often. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a spectacular. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. Storyteller and leader of, of that studio. Yeah. 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 So, okay, I'm sorry. We ha we're going to talk about Speak a Legend, I promise. Yeah, I'll get that. <laughs> we got a whole hour to spend. We got yeah. an hour. Yeah. I, I just, I can't leave this alone. So, um, you worked. Uh, you worked at Pixar. What was the first thing you worked on? When I very first started, I was a software quality assurance intern. So we were a software designer and uh, tester, really. Yeah, uh, Pixar was trying to get into the desktop right. 3D market that was going to be that. huge next year, which right. never was. Someday. And, and uh, had a product that was eventually called Finishing Touch, and Typistry came out. Oh, yeah. um, that was sort of like a, uh, do you remember a print shop? Mm-hmm. Print Broder, shop. Broder bun. There yeah. you go, right. So print shop for 3D logos on your desktop. Right. Was the thing. Cool. Right, which you can make with yeah. texture and granite. Yeah. So my job was to try to break that and then report bugs back to the engineering Fun. staff in Good job. the summer of 1990. Good job out of school. Uh, in f winter of 91, um, Pixar uh, reduced staff and Steve sold off, well, he sold off the hardware group at the point, we moved to Point Richmond, and then the software group was, was shed and we became the beginning of the animation company that Pixar now is. We've got these tools, so, let's start just <clears throat> using them. Right, and- At uh, first it was just a demo. Now, let's do something with it. And uh, that- But you were doing commercials at first. Right, so there was a Tropicana TV commercial uh, of a straw chasing an orange, then a bunch of Listerine commercials. Um, Listerine uh, Jungle, Listerine Boxer. Um, I worked on Listerine Arrows, which won a Clio in 93 or 94, whatever that was. Um, let's read as Robin Hood. What was this? What was the stat? What was the state of the art of uh, uh, animation? Here's the. Here's by the way. Here's Listerine arrows. If people want to. Oh, you pull that up. Oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time. <laughs> I apologize that this is the YouTube version, so I think it's low, pretty low res. But. Wow! Holy, way. that's 20 years ago, Batman. You get you get a sense, but so. The, was this hard to do in, in 1991? What you're seeing here is Pixar's first instance of rendered uh, NURBS with trim curves on the leaves. Interesting. Um, was the first one that actually made, made it out, out of the building. Yeah. Um, those were then widely deployed across Toy Story uh, in the neighborhood sequences. What, what, are, rest, what, for, what, is, what are NURBS? <laughs> Go ahead, what are NURBS? We're trying to kill that nerdy. <laughs> hey, NURBS. <laughs> what are NURBS? <laughs> A non-uniform rational beast blind. Yeah. NURB. Yeah. Um, uh, like, so I think people who are watching know that in uh, that you have polygons in a game. Right. You'll have polygons, actually, often triangles. Right. right? Um, is this like a better kind of polygon? Uh, you use an, a curve like that to define the outline of a shape, and then mm -hmm. you may triangulate it within it to render it. Yeah. Um, 
in the case of a trim, uh, a trim curve, a NURB patch is often rectangular, rectilinear. Yeah. Um, and you can't make a leaf out of rectangles. Leaf has a shape like an oak leaf. Yeah. So you make the rectangle very simply, and then in the space of the rectangle, define the maple leaf shape. You trim away the part that's outside. Interesting. So in 1983 or 94, whenever that, that was. That was pretty advanced. To actually get that into production. and If ship, you've used Illustrator, you've done similar. Very, almost certainly, yeah. yes. In some way. But at that point, to render th that footage, um, so that's hard to do. You know, 100,000, 200,000 leaves per shot in the background there, all wiggling a little bit in the background. Um, and of course, people watching this uh, in the middle of their Happy Days reruns probably aren't noticing that. No, but I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> animation, <laughs> animation folks are going, wait a minute, wait a minute, look at those leaves. <laughs> yeah. You all see in the bottle, the serene, the liquid there on top as well. It's, this, it's this sloshing. First instance of that and of what be. I don't know, 15 years later, becomes the reflection and refraction in Look the Nemo that. fish tank. Um, Interesting. So in the dentist's office in Nemo, yep. when you see all the fish swim around, yep. um, if you're, the camera's in the tank shooting out, right. kind of like here, we're sitting at a table here. Right. If you're filming the folks in the waiting room of the dentist or the other side filming Darla, I know she's getting right. her teeth worked on by the dentist, um, or Darla's looking into the tank. In both cases, you're crossing the glass water barrier. Yeah. And so you have to distort that the right way. Yeah. Um, which is complicated optically to, to get right, at least back in 2003. Right. But, uh, sort so of, this, this is 94, the Listerine commercial. Is this done on a Mac or, or a render farm of Macs? No, that was the era Next of silicon graphics. SGI. So Sun machines were dominant when I started 1990, 91. Yeah. SGI machines took over. And so these are like a, like 20 Onyxes working <clears> on this? Or? Yeah, there were, I forget all the product names, Indigos, yeah, they all Irises. Were colors. Yeah. Yeah, right, all the purple color. Yeah. Pur purple, there we Purples. go. That was not, not <laughs> intentional, but... Um, yeah, there were all SGI machines back in the day, uh, used for Toy Story production. And then um, I think somewhere by, by 2000, the studio had gone basically to Linux boxes on commodity hardware, right. which are, you know, Dell, whoever, right. supply them as well. That's what right. they you know, use today, so... I was animated on a Silicon Graphics Onyx there you when go. I was Dev Null. And I, the, the guy you were talking to, Karsten, he was the guy who sp spins my hair. <laughs> 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 I had to wear a bodysuit backstage. This was on MSNBC. So right about the same time as, as, as this. But that was real time, which is a little bit uh, harder to do. Yeah, very different. Uh, wow. Fun to see that Listerine commercial again. Yeah, way to pull that out of the Wayback Machine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know go there this morning. So then you start doing features. Which Toy Story was the first feature for, uh, yeah. for uh, Pixar. Yeah. And man, when we, every, everybody, when we saw Toy Story, that was like, Wow. Amazing. And uh, what, did, what did you do on that? Um, I did a little bit of the shading on Sid's backpack. <laughs> so I had to place the, um, the, the nasty notes he wrote to his sister all over his backpack. Um, mo mo most, more notably, yeah, I did the, uh, yeah, I, When people say that, you're not sitting there with pencil and paper and, and illustrating that. What, how are you doing that? You do it on a computer? So I, I think it was that Tia had painted the, the scribbles in Photoshop. Right. So I get TIFF files from her. I had to place and locate them on the backpack model. So you're, mo you're almost modeling that yeah, the, 2D the, the, thing the onto a 3D this shape. This is a memory trip here. I think that Rick had done the model or the, or the rigging of that, I think. Mm -hmm. And then my job was to um, get the canvas shading to bind to the backpack and then place the ta like tattoos on them. That was a couple weeks of work. But that's most of my time in the neighborhood sequence at the end, which is what we call T38, with the chase sequence in Toy Story. So it's Buzz and Woody trying to get back to Andy's minivan across that whatever 100, 200 shots in the chase sequence at the end. And in particular, I did the rocket's contrail effects. So when they light the rocket on Buzz's back and Buzz goes, Oh, I love that. Off, and the <laughs> exhaust contrail comes out. That was my rocket exhaust, which I'm pleased to brag about because my dad was actually a capsule engineer from Mercury and Gemini back in the day. So he got to work on real rockets. And I got no to work kidding. on animated rocket exhaust instead. So there's rockets in the family, but cool. very different agendas. Yeah, so that's really cool. I actually got to take. He has a eight millimeter silent footage of Cape Canaveral, which they filmed on various launches. Do you remember? Do you have memory of that? You were you were too young for Mercury. No, I was born in seventy one. So that's yeah, you missed my time all of for Gemini yeah. Mercury. But yeah. his he had the uh, eight millimeter black and white and color Neat. in the garage. So we got an eight millimeter projector, uh, wired right. it up. For Toy Story, and we projected to go like look at what. So you actually used his footage to inspire your animation. Generationally, brought that into the film, which was quite fun to do. That is so pretty neat. It's kind of cool. So yeah, that was fun. This is uh, pirated, I'm sure, but this is the rendering of the beginning, very famous opening shot of uh, Bugs Life, which you did. How long is that? It's 1472 frames. 1472. Which is so you divide you did, by 24. Right. You get the right <laughs> math out. Um, is it right at the beginning here? Yes, it is the first shot. 
So um, there you go. Starting. Yeah. Apologize which is in the quality. Actually, a reflection that's going to ripple. Yeah. Wait for it. Leaf hits. Oh, a ripple. Oh, look at that. Pitch up. Some of this, when you do stuff like this, is a little bit of like. Let's just show you what we can do, right? This shot, we, we're kind of flexing our muscles a little bit yeah. at a time, yeah. And now we're going to just slowly But what a good in. way to start a movie. <clears throat> like, get ready. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. what Lucas did with right. Star Wars, right? Get ready. Yeah. Yeah. You thought that was the ship? No, no, no. Yeah. That's not the ship. <laughs> this is the ship. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, it is a little bit of a tribute to uh, episode four. And uh, here you're going into the grasses on Moving in the Wind and all the plants. There's a bit, couple dandelions. How each long did this shot take? Uh, it's a minute and change if I do the math right in my I mean, head. How long did it take to make? I wish the quality were better. I apologize. Go home and get your Blu-ray. We're not done yet now. And there's the first ant. Rack focus. That was brutal. It's oh. coming up here. Wait for the rack. Wait for the rack. And there you oh. go. There we go. Oh. There we go. All right. Now, in a camera, that's easy. <clears throat> yeah, it's a freebie for it's, you guys. You just <laughs> <laughs> that no, we believe How that. hard is that to do? Well, this is back in 90, 97, 98, so yeah. that's different than it is today. But... Um, in this particular case, it was difficult to, to sort out because you actually have to render the final frames to understand if your rack focus was as intended. Did you rack too fast, rack too slow? So you're changing the plane of focus from the ant dramatically, from the ant right. on, the st on the stalk to the background right. stalks. And it's not as simple just like draw that frame, then the next frame, then the next frame, then the next frame, or is it? I mean... If you had real-time graphics feedback, it'd be take you four seconds to align it, but you don't. So in this case, you have to guess at the camera parameters of f-stop and focal distance um, and and then render it and give it a go and wow. see. Now, th again, that shot took a weekend to compute once. So it means I only got like four swings at bat across the summer right. to do that. Right. So you, the way you work, work that... You try it, then you see what it looks like. What you actually do is you mow the grass out and kill the tree. So you get rid of almost everything but like six blades of grass right. that have the ants on them, mm -hmm. and that you can render much faster. Mm -hmm. Give that a go, hope it works out correct, pile the rest of stuff back in the shot. Using and, the same numbers. Yes, yeah, and, and then, then compute it for real. Um, at that time, because uh, that would take over the entire Pixar render farm for like two and a half days to compute it <laughs> once. Um, Nobody uh, can do anything no, else. No, that's why, that's why I, I, run on, I got the weekends. So like, <laughs> you, the film crew, get Monday through Friday. Sorry. I got Saturday and Sunday, um, wow. and I had to schedule that. And that's an, a significant enough chunk of the uh, total available compute for the film right. that... If that was not organized properly, you could affect what are called real delivery deadlines. Right. So you're, you I have mean, five, six, seven reels, which is you know five eight minutes of the film, yeah. have to come out as a continuous segment to yeah. go into post studio music and the rest. Yeah. And if I like absconded with the render farm for like five calendar days, that's when you only have thirty left in the production. Up, you can't you can't do that. So right, that's not okay. Not so, good. Is it very carefully orchestrated? But don't they kind of? I mean, <laughs> they have a big Gantt chart and they know, or do they? What? Uh, I mean, yes. You're, you, it's all in the script, isn't it, ahead of time? Well, by that point, you're in that late spring, early summer of 98, yeah. and the film is due out in post-production through summer and fall. It's coming out release, you know, in November, whatever it is. Um, the reel that includes that shot has to be placed properly in the order based on all the inventory flow issues of who's animating, who's doing effects, who's yeah. lighting, all the rest of the stuff, yeah. too. Oh, we got to render B11. Oh, okay. What's that about? Well, it's going to take like several weekends to compute. <laughs> oh, crap. Oops. Put that in August. Yeah, or whatever. So right. That, yeah. Move it around. Yeah, yes, that's, your, around. that's your uh, critical path. Of also, if, if your audience wants to get especially nerdy for a second here. Oh, uh, I think they do. Okay. The, that, um, the compute of that camera move and the scale of that shot actually ran up against single precision floating point error. Uh, at really? The time. Yes. So we had to rebuild the camera matrix stack in the double precision specifically for that camera move. And in particular, at the end of the move, when you're coming at the ant, there's a, just a gentle rotate to the right. And that azimuth change would ratchet. So the first two three computes back, we're like watching the shot, we got it back, and the camera pitches up from the, from the, um, the puddle. We're moving in toward the tree. And those are a big move as you're going in meters of space you know, across that landscape. As you're settling down to the ant, You'll just, you watch the tree kind of move a little bit to the left, and it would do this. Watch the screen. Jump. Dunk, dunk, dunk. And that's because you don't have enough precision. We were at the single precision floating point accuracy of the matrix math, and it's because you have to invert a counter matrix in there. So you do matrix inversion, those of you in the audience that wow. want that, um, you'll get that. So wow. not yet. Watch the tree in particular. <clears throat> See, now you're going to ruin it for <laughs> So now the right side of the tree yeah. is moving toward the left now. Yeah. See as the camera's going just a bit yeah, to the right. Yeah, yeah. And now we're gonna adjust just oh, gently. Uh, 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 and the tree's going smooth. It's going smoothly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
We're coming to the ant now. Nobody's looking at the tree at that point, so right. it's okay. But that tree was ratcheting in the yeah. background. It was actually single precision floating point error resolution of what is that what is that 16 million what is that uh yeah 16.7 million so you you have what nerbs what 16.7 million what no, points it is the is sort of accuracy represented by that the, so you need more than 16.7 went to 32 bit yeah holy cow i'm oh, sorry uh, sorry maybe 64 bit whatever it was i found a blu-ray we, this we is, had a, to go to this is, this is a blu-ray right. copy of it so we can run through it once more and then we're going to continue in a bit with orrin jacob finding nemo you worked it and that is a yeah what is it? Chief technical. I was the supervising technical director. Supervising so, technical director. Oh, here you get the proper. Uh, I got. Scope it. I version. finally got a good quality version up for you. In two three nine. It, it, yes, exactly. Right. Wide screen all the way. Not merely sixteen nine, my friends. No. <laughs> no, we got. Look at the specular highlights on this, and you, and you think I'm looking at the sky, and no, it's water. Hard to do that water. Is that hard to do? That particular one was relatively easy because we didn't have a splash happening. It was simply a yeah, ripple. Yeah. Ripple is the right thing to reach for in 98. So we'll yeah, splash water yeah. in, Splashes later. in 03 in yeah. Nemo. And I hear they're trying to find Dory and, now. So and I'm you sure chose they're... ants because there's no fur, right? <laughs> that was two years later. In, or Couldn't two years do later fur. In we'll get to Sullivan <laughs> next. Yeah. <clears throat> this, uh, this is, a, and you know, I, I'm glad to do this with you because I want people to appreciate this, <laughs> don't you think? The fine grain detail of Mugs Life. Well, I just want them to look. You know what? It's great. You go see the movie. You love the movie. It's a wonderful story. You you get engrossed in it the first time you see it, the second time you see it. But it's nice to come back, sit back, and look at what is technically going on here. That's a nicer version, yes. Much better. Go. We'll see the rack focus much better here. Um, Drops the fleet. Oh, oh look at that. wow. Yeah. And that's just a couple of frames. How many frames? Four frames? Five frames? Oh, the rack folks think was about a second or two. That's probably oh, it's probably 20 so to 30 frames across okay. the rack. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh. Anyway. So much fun to see it again. Oh, here we got a... Matissa has six is precision. The exponent can go as high as 10 to 20. Okay. We're getting some of the folks in the chat room jumping in. These guys are smarter than you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the help from the crowd there. Okay. Whatever that yeah. means, he said... Uh, uh, it's uh, Dr. Morbius. I think he works in animation. The Matissa has six digits of precision. The exponent <laughs> can go as high as 10 to the 28th. How many of us lucky to get finished? Okay, we can get involved in that for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Moving on. <laughs> we're going to take a break, come back with more. This is fun. And I speak a legend, because we're going to talk about your current stuff, which yeah. is really yeah. cool, Thank bringing you. this to the iPad. In fact, it was an iPad uh, uh, app cap I uh, did a couple of weeks ago. And uh, coincidentally, because I didn't know you were coming in, we get to talk about it. <laughs> That's awesome. Our show today brought to you by the folks at Prosper. What a great idea. Peer-to-peer -peer lending taking the world by storm the idea is instead of going to a bank hat in hand you got to put on a suit and tie and pants you can you you can what prosper does is it brings people with money to lend together with people who need to borrow money and it just it's a friction free process and i want you to try it right now at prosper.com/twit what would you do if you could borrow $35,000 in as few as 5 days and use the money for just about anything you want. Pay off high-rate credit cards. This time of year, this is a really good thing. Fix up your house for the holidays. Put uh, that money into a new business or polish up your old business. It's hard to borrow money these days, but with fixed-rate, low-fixed-rate loans from Prosper.com, it's easy. You can go right there right now without affecting your good credit and get a, uh, a rate at Prosper.com slash Twit. Fabulous idea. Silicon Valley's answer to the big bank loan. And for a limited time, Prosper's offering Twit viewers a $50 Visa prepaid card when you get a loan. That's kind of nice, just in time for the holidays. Prosper.com slash Twit. Up to $35,000 in just five days and a $50 Visa prepaid card. Go to Prosper.com slash Twit right now. Get your quote. Our guest, Oren Jacob, is the CEO of Toy Talk. Toy Story, Toy Talk, that was not an accident. <laughs> that was not an accident. But are you still, you're not still at Pixar, though? No, no, I left Pixar um, in uh, the winter of 11. Do you yep. miss working on movies, or that's got to be a young man's, because you don't have a life if you're doing that, right? <laughs> um, I still have many great friends at Pixar and love the place very much. I yeah. wanted to work outside of film, and Pixar yeah. makes film, and it's the best place in the world to make film. Well, so, you get in. Well, excuse well, me. you okay there? I'm trying to get my, there, I got my wire out so I can. Wow, I could connect here. You get, um, you 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 get in film. You get to make uh, beautiful images and tell stories, but nowadays we have these mediums like the iPad that are kind of begging uh, for those kinds of skills in a more personal medium. 
So I could see how somebody who's done that on the big screen would like to do it on, on the little screen. Well, you know, the, the idea behind Toy Talk is, is to build characters in conversation with an audience directly. And Which can, is why, that's the other thing, you're breaking the fourth wall, you're actually right, talking. Right, really do that or not. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, having worked as, in computer graphics and storytelling for 20 years um, at Pixar and, and loved every minute doing that as well, too, I was sort of possessed by this moment with my daughter, who I mentioned Toby's now 10, she I guess was seven, yeah, late, early seven years old then, back in the spring of 11. And uh, whatever iPhone version was out then, I don't know, iPhones 2 or 3, whatever it was, we were running Skype, and she was Skyping with Grandma down in Southern California. Yeah. Goes off the Skype call, says, bye, Grandma, bye, and hangs up the Skype call, and then kind of looks at me, and we're in the playroom downstairs in our house, and turns over to the pile of, of plush toys and stuff on the side of the playroom and says, Dad, can I use this to talk to them? And I was like, well, I... Bing, did a light go off? It just... It was a very direct question from a seven-year-old. Yeah. My, Martin and I were talking about doing some, uh, some other, you know, other ideas at the time, but I mentioned to him that evening on our phone call I had with him, and a week or two later, we kind of came back to the question. I was like, what was she really asking there? Was, can she Skype with her teddy bear? Can she Skype with, you know, that, that American Girl doll, that, that, you know, Vader, that Sammy Owens, whatever it was? kids have always done that. I mean, I remember my daughter talking to her American Girl doll, talking to her teddy right. bears. They imagine the answer. There is an interaction going on, but uh, maybe you could make that more vivid. Maybe we could actually do that. Maybe you could actually do it. So that summer of 11, when Martin and I sat down and began thinking about what became Toy Talk for real, we sort of asked ourselves, is that, is that actually possible to do today? Right. Maybe. You're talking about Martin Reddy, by the way. Yes, Martin Reddy, my co-founder CTO, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, is it possible to do, in 2011, starting a company to do that? And if it is, what would happen to the world if we did that? Yeah. And we actually didn't know the answer to either one of those questions. So at Pixar, so, you had, even from the beginning, worked with tools, and yet at the end, you, yeah. had, you were director of Studio Tools. Yeah. So did you, were you, I mean, you can't use the same tools, right? No, not at all. So do no, you have to develop not. new tools? How does this work? Yeah, so when we pulled together Toy Talk, and uh, two of us became six by the fall of 2011. So mm -hmm. now we're a small group hiding in Renee's living room in San Francisco, and then eventually got our barn <laughs> south of markets where we are now. Um, we went out to go look for tools one would use right. to create a character in conversation, uh, and those don't exist. I don't think so. Yeah. No, not so much. You can't buy them from Adobe or Microsoft or anybody else. So we dug deeper in, okay, I guess we're building a tool set with, to author conversation, which we now have. We call right. that tool set pull string, as the pull string of a marionette puppet would be. And um, that is sort of a combination of Microsoft Word a little Google search, a chat bot, an AI engine, and a hierarchy browser <laughs> had a baby, if that makes sense to anybody out there. Um, but those are all the tasks that you have to, you kinda, the things you need to do. Right, you, you need to write, so yeah, what, what, that's word. what would a character say? You need to see what would be said back to you. Mm -hmm. um, that's what a chat bot does. Mm -hmm. That character, that, that character the, the, the character you're authoring, has to decide <laughs> what to say back. That's the AI engine part. Mm -hmm. I gotta go find all the stuff that I've written before to keep working on it. That's sort of Google searchy. Mm -hmm. And I have to construct the conversation in some way. This is not trivial. Just the chatbot stuff. I mean, we've seen Eliza and lots of these kind right. of primitive artificial intelligences, and they're kind of dopey. It's, it, it's you a, gotta reinvent that? Yes, to a certain degree, although you know, one part of our tool set is, is grounded in that place, but it also has um, a lot of the complicated sort of concepts you get today from natural language processing in general understanding. Yeah, so we know a little more. We're better at this. Synonyms and homophones and antonyms, and, right. Yeah, so, and right. Cortana, they all can kind of talk to you. Yeah, I actually was at a conference with, uh, um, just a few weeks ago, uh, a company, Wit AI, I think, put together a conference that had... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Adam Shire, who was one of the founders of Siri, today he runs a company called Viv. The head of Cortana was there, the head of Google Now was there, um, the ex previous CEO of Nuance was there, all talking about synthetic personality. And, Interesting. And what, what that means. Yeah. So in mobile search, you see Siri and Cortana and Google Now are all, all very present today. Um, Toy Talk showed up at the conference and we gave a talk about actual personality. I bet they loved that. But we, we were sort of the odd bird out yeah. perhaps in a little bit. Uh, maybe not that. But you're in a challenging space because they're somewhat constrained. The, the kinds of things they do, they're very, they intentionally limit. Right. It's a constrained vocabulary they're dealing with. It's a constrained uh, results that they can give you. Um, and I mean, you have some constraints as well. Obviously you have to, you can't be completely right. general. Right. But I think you're dealing with a much more challenging set of problems, aren't you? But, uh, thank you for that. Um, I guess I would characterize it as certainly a different set of challenges to the extent that... Yeah, but you can't predict what a kid's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> but let's give, let's give credit to, like, I'll talk about Google for a second. You're in Google Maps, you're like, I want a restaurant. It's impressive. 
Like, what kind of restaurant do you want? Yeah. Sushi, where? Petaluma. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. So, but again, it's a fairly constrained environment, uh, you know, uh, space that they're working in. Well, certainly when you talk about, you know, a seven-year-old playing with their toys, they will say anything. Mm -hmm. So we do get back, even playing with us digitally, we'll get back a lot of stuff. Right. Um, we, we actually were invited to a Thanksgiving dinner, um, and they brought an iPad over, set it up. This is last year with the Winston show. Fun. One of the ch children brought Winston to a Thanksgiving dinner and had all the parents introduce us to Winston back and forth as, like, part of the show. So cool. And so we get an email from mom and dad, like, well, this is the coolest thing ever. We had ever. this crazy yellow banana talking to us at the Thanksgiving dinner. Like, that's great. Um, <laughs> and I, maybe the reason to talk about, you know, for kids or not, you asked earlier about, about Speak a Legend. Um, we sort of chose to, to try to create for the five, six, seven, eight-year-old range because yeah. at, that, at that age, um, it's probably before you're playing Clash of Clans, it's probably before you found Instagram. Yeah. And you might still believe in Santa Claus. Yeah. You so, better uh, still uh, believe it. You're well, not going to get any presents. So, yeah. uh, at that place, um, children also, on the earlier side of that, have just sort of are developing the command of spoken language. Yeah. And for them, speaking is enjoyable in its own right. They just want to talk. Right. And so finding an audience that we can begin to create for in that space that wants to talk already is different than perhaps someone. Yeah. Of your sophistication, language-wise. Well, and the demands. I mean, the kid's going to be happy, probably, you could say almost anything, in the fact that you're getting some response. The kids They'll at least give it a try. Yeah. A and when you're trying to create a new form of art, a new form of media, right. what does it mean to create a personality right in conversation? Kids. I need someone They're to open. talk back to me and yeah. give it a try. Right. Yeah. Give it a try. So that's why we chose to Was do that. Was the Winston show the first one? Yes. That came out, um, yeah, uh, about 15 months ago now. So last um, uh, September, we launched that. Most that innovative app for kids for 2013. Yeah. You Apple were, gave us a uh, lovely... Accolade there. Editor's Choice. And it's uh, are, yeah. it's free. You can download it right now. It's Speaking still of what, you just pulled up Ellington. Have I got to check this out. <laughs> what do you got? There's an actual Ellington. Oh, he's so Look cute. Look at that. Yeah, right? There you go, Leah. There you go. You got one of those. Can I have Ellington? You can have that, yeah. Oh, neato. Nice. That's great. <laughs> so that's kind of, you know, the truth is having worked at Pixar is a huge benefit for you because, uh, I think there's a lot of technologists who could do something to, to this, but this also brings in character and and animation and personality, and that's really hard to do. As hard as it is to do an AI, it's it's equally hard to do personality. Well, thank you for for bringing the topic at all. I mean that that was that does make us a very unusual company. Yeah. It's a fund on San Hill Road. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because we are part technology and part content, and those things both exist in Toy Talk and kind of need to. Um, so how did we, uh, how, I want to show Speak a Legend, which is the current yeah. version, but how did Winston show work? You would, uh, the kid would press a button and talk to Winston or? Yeah, so we use a metaphor kind of like Siri does. We have a, a hold to talk, like a walkie talkie works. Right. Um, and so, you know, hello Winston, how are you? I'm fine, how are you doing? Um, in this case, the Winston show is sort of a skit-based variety comedy show. There were sto new stories every week. Yeah, so we did that, see, that show ran from September last year all the way through March. So of, cool. That you're this, right this year, um, and uh, yeah, you can. So that what you'll get now if you download the Winston Show is sort of what we call internally season two. So there are four or five episodes there, um, each one of which is more than half an hour to forty-five minutes of playtime, back and forth um, with the whole cast of characters you see there. Are each, those in-app purchases? How does that work? That whole it's all free at this point in time. That, that so you're just interested at this point in getting a, sta a foot in, in the, the door. That, here. Their products offered no charge. Yeah, so everything's um, free. And That's uh, great. Just as you did earlier today in the show, all parents have to give us consent to do this cover yeah. talking to kids. And I should point that out because uh, and that's Kappa. Yeah. Uh, any anybody under 13 right. has to get parental permission. Otherwise, you can't inter you gather information. Uh, even something as simple as talking back to them. Right. You 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 can't have the microphone. Can't even go on until you in, have. Parental in particular, permission. any data that, that leaves at the particular mobile device and right. touches an internet connected server. Right. Um, which of course we do speech recognition on the cloud. And like the, you do with the minute you're doing too. that. Yeah. So um, yeah. we ask parents for direct permission, and also that means so that um, we can share back with parents what their kids say, which is quite. That's a kind of a fun part of the website, yeah. by the way, is you have. Uh, uh, the best of um, editor's picks, you call them. Uh, yeah, so that, some, that parents have sent you these? Or? Yeah, so some parents get really, because there's kids say really funny stuff, you know, mail us or submit to us and say, hey, this is super fun. We, you know, put this on your site. Which we, one should I play of the four you've got? Oh, uh, gosh. Uh, got here? I, um, I think the, the beaver, the, uh, the elephant or the beaver? I elephant or the right. beaver. Let's do the elephant okay. first. Yeah, there you go. So this is uh, some, and by the way, the parent has sent this in and yes. given permission. So uh, this is... So first you're going to actually let me start over again. So first you're going to hear the the speak a legend character right. talking. That's from you guys. And then there'll be a pause and you'll hear the child's response That's to right. that. Can I you turn it up a little? That going on a sleepover would be so stressful. Here I was thinking I'd never be invited on one, and now that I have been, it 
It was weird that at first I was too scared to even go. You know what I mean? Now that, by the way, that's a very interesting um, starting point for a kid. You've actually thought about these things that might be emotionally charged issues for kids, well, and you're giving them a chance to talk you know about what? that. In this case, it's a, a sleepover. I think that's really interesting. So Here I was it, thinking I'd never be invited. You could talk over it. Okay. Heard um, we found that. Um, if we ask kids questions that are yes or no, or... Here's the, here's the child's answer. Yes, I do. I know you're scared, elephant, but there's nothing to be scared of. Pack your willy, or another stuffed animal, and pack a blankie and a pillow and... and so this is a kid. Snack. This is real. Yeah. This is a kid talking back to this elephant, having this conversation. Yep. I'm pleased to report, yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> That's great. Isn't that cool? I mean, right? Yeah. Now, th this drives the speech recognition scientists completely crazy because that's free-form conversation. Yes. Right? And uh, that's not the kind of data you typically get talking to a mobile personal assistant or not. Right. right? Um, well, but the good news is the elephant does not have to deal with what the kid says at this point. I mean, the elephant doesn't have to understand it and respond to it. We have to understand it was enough that the next thing the elephant says back makes sense in the conversation. So you do. Well, we, we'll do our best, but that, yeah. that is that is the challenge of natural language That's understanding. That's really hard. At the fully fledged, like yeah. human conscious level. Yeah. I'll get to in 20 years from now, but. So the idea is you want to continue this, go back and forth for how long with the kid? Well, as long as they want to talk to us, I suppose. Continue, but, right? But, okay, so it's not infinite. I mean, I guess on the Winston show, we tried to design the skits to be five to seven, eight minutes experiences each. Yeah. Um, here on, on um uh, that's from Speak a Zoo. On Speak a Legend, which you have on your iPad, yeah, we expected the child's playtime to probably be, let's say, uh, five to ten minutes per character, I suppose. And uh, what we find typically is kids will play with us for about 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes at a time, yeah. um, which is very long for mobile experience, but um, uh, all that's really focused on conversation two ways. And that lets us both... You asked a question earlier about the kind of topics we, we talk about. I mean, we, that's we a particularly found, interesting prompt. That's, that's a, a psychologically deep prompt. We found that, like I said before, yes or no questions or ABCs yeah. or things. The, kids are yes or no and, like, who really right. cares? But when you ask how or why questions, yeah. now it begins a conversation for real. It's mm -hmm. really opening up to the things the kids want to talk about is what we're trying to learn as, as a writing team and a creative wow. team to find out ways that they want to talk to us. Um, when you do no that... No one has ever done this, right? I mean, this is... You're in not, not, uncharted territory here. Yeah, we're, we're off that edge at this point. Yeah. Do you have uh, Do you have a, a psychologist working with you on some of these? We have or? a couple of folks who are advisors in child psychology. Yeah. We talk to um, about what we do, but I think mostly it's just writing content and then next morning listening to what kids say back and then yeah. adjusting and changing. So you it. do listen to them and it, see how it works it, it, inside. We do. That's why we get yeah. permission, permission from parents to do that. Yeah. Um, and that lets us improve the show. So um, this as a as a form of media, what's unique about conversation done this way in 2015, or 2014, I should say, or now, right. is that it's a cloud-connected service and has to be. There's no recognition on device you can do that will let you get anything close to what you can do on a, on a cloud service. No, you have to, yeah. That also means that you're a live cloud service. And right. so for us, as the Winston Show was, or Speak a Legend is today too, um, we tune the show day to day right. and can, in fact, minute to minute. So if we, as we first come out to market and we realize a bunch of kids are not getting a certain part or like they're not going to this part of the show or not, we adjust the prompts, change the, change the structure of that, that character's mind and it's pushed back to AWS and Amazon's cloud wow. and it's live a second later. So it, it, it is very much not a film. When you finish a film, you go to theaters and you're done with it. This is much more like running uh, a, a online service. multiplayer service yeah. like Clash of Clans or World of Warcraft. Right. right. So, for, or like a Broadway show actually. So our work until we launch in the App Store is rehearsal on day one when apple puts us in the app store a curtain goes up and now you're doing the show every wow. night again and again and again which the individual audience member thinks is just cats or annie or the producers in fact that show is different every night right change the blocking you change right. an actor comes in and out you change the props as well too because you're tuning the show live in market that makes sense we do that every, we do that we do that that's what we do wow so it is a service behind it um, both because it can be, but because it needs to be. We have to learn right. how to write and, and learn how to respond back. That is, that is, that is the creative well, wait, that's a, that's, It's a lucky thing that the computers aren't smart enough and fast enough to do this. <laughs> yes. It should be a cloud service because it it's a performance. I'd like, we're gonna, I want to play it a, a little bit. Um, uh, Silicon Riot in our chat room wanted to know if you have any experience with uh, autistic kids and, uh, and, these, oh. and these programs or developmentally challenged uh, people. I've had... Um, Actually, a very moving story um, uh, was an anecdote shared, I think, by one mother. Uh, this is probably three months ago or so. 
So, no, no, uh, late spring, so right, May or June. And um, uh, her son um, was on the spectrum and was not vocal. And uh, they got the Winston show for them on an iPad. Uh, and the child didn't really know, sort of watch it and didn't respond back. And after some time, when we get no response, we'll just keep, kind of keep going in the show and just sort of try to carry along. And then uh, one day, said hello to Winston and then wouldn't stop talking. Just sort of turned on and that was it, which became too much. And so the parents now use the, use the Winston show with their child as a way to, for sort of behavior rewards. Um, and that was not a way we designed it at all. And that's not, I, we're in no You're way- You're not making any therapeutic claims. I, I can't, because I don't, it's not my specialty. Right. I, I don't know, I don't I know little about boy, that. boy, is that interesting. It's very special when you hear that. And, no and, kidding. And, and also to be fair, you know, the, like when a Pixar film comes out, hundreds of letters come into the studio about other children on different parts of the spectrum who connect in different ways yeah. um, to animated characters. Yeah. That can be hand-drawn, that can be CG, it can be yeah. 3D, it can be not. Yeah. Um, the fact that even one child was affected that way made sort of the effort worth it That's in a so sense. That's so neat. That's um, so neat. And wow. uh, yeah, I, I think it, when the time is right, um, the technology available that comes out of this mm -hmm. um, has applications on the area. Absolutely. But th that's obviously not Toy Talks. This is a toy. Policy. Right. We're just trying to learn how to not do this right the first time. But yeah. yeah, I appreciate the question. Um, yeah, sure. really interesting. Oren Jacob is our guest. He's the CEO of Toy Talk. I want to play with Speak a Legend. And uh, we'll, we'll show you how it works a little bit in, uh, in a second. Our show today brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you finally will know where your money is, how it's working for you, how it's not working for you. You've got to plan ahead. i got to tell you, if you're going to buy a house, plan, saving for a rainy day, and most importantly, investing for retirement for your future. But a lot of times, you know, we, have, we start with the best of intentions, but this stuff is hard. All the accounts... Uh, every, every, you know, all your bills, everything on different websites all over the place, your, 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 your investments, your bank account, your savings, your charge cards. It's impossible to see everything uh, in one simple way. It's impossible to know if you're overspending. And then, you know, you kind of forget about it. You Maybe you don't to pay as much attention to it as you ought to. Personal capital really solves this. You're going to put everything into personal capital. This is free, by the way. Uh, go to personalcapital.com slash triangulation. You put all your accounts in there, and you're going to... The first benefit immediately is you get this dashboard of how everything's doing, where everything is, what your assets are, what your net worth is, where your cash flow is going. It'll help you with budgeting. They actually can do budgeting with you. Um, all sorts of stuff. But it also will then give you a, a sense of how things are progressing because you check in. In fact, they even have an Android Wear app, so your watch from time to time will say, hey, you know, pay attention to this. Um, and then it will tell you things like, you know, are you over paying for investment advice? Are you using the investment advice? It'll even give you investment advice if you need on, on, uh, on asset allocation, planning, that kind of thing. Personal capital is amazing. I've been using it for two years. We had its uh, CEO, uh, Bill Harris, on the show when he was just starting it. We were talking to him about his time at Intuit, where he was CEO and PayPal, where he's CEO and about money and about finance and authentication and stuff. And he said, hey, by the way, I got this personal capital thing you want to try, and I did. I love this. I love this. you got to try it free, personalcapital.com slash triangulation. You can even get tailored advice on optimizing your investments. Personal capital, total clarity and transparency so you can make better investment decisions right away. Personalcapital.com slash triangulation. If you haven't tried it yet, do. And, of course, they have apps for all the uh, platforms, even for your wristwatch. I think that's pretty cool. That would be uh, a watch app. Do you, do you think about doing stuff for adults at all, or I mean, uh, my ambition is to entertain all ages. As there's, we, as there's we did something there, yeah. So, uh, we'll get there, but yeah, we're start with starting start here. Start, now. <laughs> begin with. This is what you're doing is pretty amazing. Here's a, this is the jackal. Should we go to the beginning here? Tell uh, me about Speak a Legend. This is Speak a Legend. Just a quick answer to a bunch of stuff about. Oh the, yeah, the room's very interesting. There's some Android version questions coming up here. Uh, okay. Not today, sorry guys, but we are we are working on Android versions. Is this currently. easier to do on uh, iOS? Uh, initial development kind of can be done e e happened. either way. Um, yeah. At the time, in 2011, when we started the company, that was a place probably to go to. Yeah. Uh, certainly will support Android coming up soon. Um, the, the device... That's always a tough. challenge of Android. is complicated, but we'll get there. Yeah. And, and it's also... Soon, so. uh, no company has unlimited development funds. You have to make choices about where you're going to yes. allocate your resources. It's just the way it is, you know? Um, and so you do it where you think... I mean, probably... More kids and parents have Android, I mean, have iOS devices, right? Even today. It's but a, that's shifting. 
it's shifting and it's very different domestic versus international. It's very different. Uh, that's a good point, um, too. Yeah. It, largely. Uh, this is international, but it's English only, right? It, it, yeah, so for, uh, <laughs> which is a funny question. I mean, I picked our discussion 10 minutes ago. When you internationalize a film or TV show, it's one way. Like, take the, take the audio from the film and turn it like, into Mandarin or, or French yeah. or Spanish. In this case, there are, there are two problems which multiply. One is our content has to go to, I'll pick Mandarin for a second, into Mandarin. Then you got to recognize Mandarin coming back. Which is a whole different agenda. It's like rewriting new software almost. Yeah, so speech recognition has to get to a place where it can, and, and for adults, that is the case largely now. There are probably, if you talk to any of the major providers, Google being one of the best out there, um, uh, Nuance, uh, or what Siri can do, or stuff you see in Amazon. They Microsoft slowly come out. roll out new markets. It takes a while. They do, but they're probably in certainly over 20 or 30 now yeah. uh, for adults, uh, adult speech right. under foreign languages. Um, and that's really, when you look at, North American English, it really has you know, a lot of Spanish mixed into it because it's a consonant that's different than like English English or Canadian English, the case right. may be. But yeah, you, you can do Spanish, French, Hindi, uh, Mandarin, Japanese, Korean, a bunch of languages now. Um, kids' speech recognition hasn't been done by anybody ever. Full stop. Why is that? Not done. Uh, no one had data to work with because no one had any no kid compliant voices. way to get it at all. So you're the first one to have a data set of kid voices. That's right, that's right. And parents give us consent uh, with our applications to use their children's recordings for the purpose of building recognition models for kids. It says so. that explicitly. I have to say you're very good about that, explaining you. what you're doing yes. and how you're using it. Thank you. Parents are informed before the kid does this. But that is an interesting side effect, is that you're going to have, you have some data sets no one else has. That's right. But the purpose of those data sets, as I mentioned in our consent emails and the rest with parents, is to allow recognition providers to build acoustic yeah. language models for kids. Yeah. That means that the previous questions going on about, um, you know, can you create um, you know, clinically relevant recognition examples uh, for things as well, too? Well, no, because today we only recognize adult speech. So, right. no. You have to get to recognize kids' speech first, at which point then a whole bunch of things open up, which that's one of them. Certainly language education, reading education, pronunciation, foreign language learning, all kinds of stuff comes out of that. But you have to have the basic recognition capability there to even begin to open that space up. So that's part of the journey to talk is on is to help that happen. Here's the um, email I got when I started with Speak a Legend. Your kids, you could show my screen uh, on the computer, Jason. Your kids want to play with Speak a Legend. We need your permission to play with Toy Talk apps. And then you really, I think, do a great job of explaining what's going on so the parent has a chance and it's not and then there's a big i give permission but it's not the last conversation you have you continue to uh send information here's an email i got from you thanks for joining the community your kids said something awesome this week you send recordings huh? out well we don't send record we send a link to the website which is protected by a password authentication so if you follow the link you're back to twitot.com thank you for doing it right that's right only where you authenticate through then you can see what your kid says only yeah and then you may choose to delete that data or keep it around or do what you want to Isn't with it but great? only you get access to that let me play i got to play the uh, the uh, beaver, <laughs> the beaver here this is the this yeah, is pretty this good. is the beaver See, this is exactly why i need to talk to you it is just so impossible dealing with animals that aren't as smart as you are Hey, I'm sure you run into this stuff all the time. How do you deal with humans who aren't as smart as you? Well, well. did you know animals and other persons, they don't have to be as smart as someone else. Did you know everyone can be very different? It doesn't matter how you're wow. made. It There's hope for humanity only here. matters if you're a nice person. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that and these are kid, things kids probably wouldn't say to even to any. I mean, this is something, this is a very intimate moment. So I, I've been testing out now with hundreds of families in the Bay Area. When I drive, I go take our, our products as we're developing them and, and test in houses. And I noticed there's sort of two sort of categories of behavior. For the particularly presentational child who likes to be noticed, likes to right. be loud and out there, they will almost always grab the iPad and just go for it in front of mom, dad, myself, yeah. two coworkers. They're performing. They're on. That's about maybe a half of kids yeah uh, another about a thir third or quarter of kids um uh, often the um they won't sign up for dra drama club they tend to be more more um uh not as presentational in their interest well like study it let me try it for a while then kind of take it and they'll leave quickly yeah and they down the hall in the door close yeah, the door good w wh where'd they go well they're gonna go play gonna, in the room this is private Okay, so in that case, we asked the parents, we'll walk down the hall and kind of sit in the hallway. And listen. So take yeah. notes and listen and yeah. see. Um, 
I love a 20, 30 minute conversation. Come out. I'm done. Here you go. Or, or no, not. They wanted to go but in private. They want to take the to where they want to yeah. be in their space. And the fact that we can reach a child like that at all is a very special thing. We take that, you know, treat that very carefully. Yeah. But that is possible to reach that level of connect, connection now um, with an authored experience this way, which is pretty cool. Wow. So, um, so okay, I've got I've, I've I got my daddy's permission to a place speak a legend. <laughs> and so here, this is what you see, right? We. What, yeah. what, what should I do now? What do uh, I... Pick your favorite character. The Cyclops is quite fun to play with. Uh, right. Bigfoot's pretty good, too. Um, so I, I'm going to the Cyclops. Yeah. Now, this uh, how much? This is all pre can oh, Hello, hello. Oh, 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 it's been so long since I had a little pet come and visit me, and you're the cutest puppy I ever saw ever, my little puppy. <laughs> hello, puppy. How are you? Now it's going to show a little... Right. And the kids pretty quickly grok that you press that to talk to it. They do now, and that's been a very significant change in the last three years only. So when I first started the company, this was hopeless. Yeah, what and do I'd you be do? Like, it's like a walkie-talkie. Looks at it. Like a what? A walkie-talkie. They start talking. A what? A what? Right. All right, so... <laughs> Kids don't have walkie yeah, what, what? Now, uh, <laughs> Apple had bought the startup Siri, which had the app Siri sometime earlier on, right. late 10, early 11, and released it as part of iOS in within a week or two of us starting to talk, this coincidentally. Within a year of that, by the late fall, uh, late of 2012, early 2013, it went from zero to 100% of kids understood that metaphor. And in the past 18 months, I have not met a child who does not heckle Siri endlessly. That is utterly pervasive at the grade school and younger level. That's fascinating. Yeah. That, and all of us sitting here. What like, a cultural uh, change that is. All of us above age 15 don't get this at all. Like, so kids uh, are already doing this with Siri. Just because. Because I could heckle him. All What's your right, favorite well, color? What's your, so, what's your, what's your, yeah. Hi, Cyclops. I am not a pet. <laughs> See what he does with that one. Oh, because I thought you were a cute little puppy. Yeah, because you have two arms and two legs <laughs> and two eyes, just there like a cute little puppy. <laughs> but that's okay if you aren't a puppy. Hey, hey, you know what looks like a sheep because it is white, but it isn't a sheep because it's a horse with a horn on its head. <laughs> Do you know what that is? Um, is it a unicorn? That's right, that's right, it is a unicorn. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now I'm getting stars you know here. That? Yeah. So as you go through the conversation, we're going to reward you. Uh, I am smart. Once you get Did the first you nine animals a unicorn before? happy and coordinated together, then you get to lock the unicorn. Then I get to see the unicorn. Now, touch the so that gives us a goal. Right. Now, start touching the sheep and the rocks, too, which is super fun as well, too. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> All kinds of fun there. My kids always... Oh, it's night time. <laughs> okay. So two things happened there that are actually quite relevant to talk about now. One was you're touching the screen with the sheep, which he did not comment about. The other yeah. one was the screen he does comment about. Then touch him on the belly, on the belly button. Oh, I have to talk. Oh. Did you ever see a unicorn before? I haven't seen one, oh, but I heard that if you're also always well. nice and, and kind and not squeeze people too hard too. when you hug them, you'll make everyone very <laughs> you can happy. See, and you can see how a kid would just <laughs> dig the heck out of this. I'm still working on the not squeezing hard part. Do you hire actors? Where what do you get you these? Um, one of the main voice actors actually works with us at Toy Talk. Uh, he's also one of our writers named Dan Clegg. He's, he's a local Shakespearean actor. He's great. Yeah. And we also use Sarah and Chris Scott and a bunch of folks inside of Toy Talk as well. Uh, you can do his face and his arms as well, too. Try it around. There he goes, ears. Whoa! Yeah. He hit the sheep! <laughs> if you get the uh, the grass, it's to the screen left of his foot there. You get the, another sheep to come walking in. There's the black sheep. Got like that one. Yep. <laughs> Who is that black sheep? <laughs> the kids learn. Well, 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 you should definitely say that. Uh huh. Then you will be best friends with a unicorn and fly away into a rainbow, and I'll cry out of my one eye and be sad because I will miss you. <laughs> oh, but then you can wave down at me, and I'll look really, really small to you, so that Don't will make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, so, what I was commenting on before was um, the combination okay, of. Okay, okay, okay. We could, we could silence the ogre. I mean, the Cyclops. <laughs> The combination of touch and talk actually is, uh, is also in discover country. So if you and I are at dinner, and we're talking over dinner, and I drop a fork. Yeah. You probably don't say anything, and I go and pick it yeah. up and carry on with the meal. Yeah. We're talking at dinner, and the lights go out. Yeah. Blackout. What happened? Right. Okay. That interrupted your conversation. Right. So now, how do you handle interrupts? If you're talking to a cyclops, and you're touching the sheep, or changing light today, yeah. or touching him with a club or his body yeah. or not, um, if you're like, hey, Leo, 
can we talk for a minute? And right. Cut. That's, That's a, very different yeah. than if I'm like, hey, Leah, what's going on? Yeah. So th the notion of how you interrupt conversation, where it goes after the interrupt, how do you thread back to where you were before? That's a very complicated bit of business, both from an interface point of view, like touch and microphone involved, Absolutely. and from a software design and creative point of view as well. You'll notice that the, the digital assistants, Siri, Cortana, Google Now, and the rest, don't present a character on screen. Right. Well, I mean, Cortana does, to let you know who she is because of the video game reference. Right. But like Siri and Google Now are just an audio waveform in the You know, it's screen. interesting. Microsoft says the reason uh, Cortana has a visual appearance is in, a, is in Asia, they expect it. And there's often this meme that, you know, five or ten years ago, Korea, Japan, and China, where we're going to be now. So right. They're, they're three years ahead of us. Right. The notion of a digital personality, like as a rock star, is pervasive in Japan. Yep. She's off touring. The Adoro, yeah, yeah. Just, you could go right. see. A friend of mine just saw her recently. She was, performed. Came to LA. Yeah. The live backup band, but she's yeah. a... She's a, a hologram. Right. And it's like real. Ish. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> well, has a huge fan base. And Aren't we in interesting times? And you you really uh, in the cutting edge, the foreground of this. Do you ever... Now, this is an entertainment uh, yeah. uh, product, but do you ever want to introduce some educational elements? Even things like simple things like how to converse and... I, I, absolutely, but to get like didactically relevant, you probably need speech recognition to be in an accuracy place. You can yet. give the lesson yeah. that you intend to give, yeah. um, and as recognition rates get better, absolutely, that there's uh, there's a there is, to my knowledge, no satisfactory like language learning you know digital offering that involves you actually recognizing speech back and forth at, at this kind of level. Not yet. That I've seen out but there. But boy, would that be valuable? So, something like Duolingo with for sure. with this technology, and it would be hugely impressive yeah. and interesting. Uh, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe relatively soon. This but is not a big today. step. Speak or treat. Speak a legend. Speak a zoo. And the Winston Show are the four apps yeah. right now. You can find out more at toytalk.com. We've got uh, its CEO and founder, Warren Jacob, with us. We'll wrap it up in just a, a minute. But first. Uh, it's time for me to tell you a little bit about smart things. We're talking about smart kids. Let me show you some smart things. You want your house to be smarter. That's the next thing, too, to be able to talk to the house. We're, you know, <laughs> yeah. that would be right. awesome. And you, you know what? Smart things is getting us a, a long way there. This was a Kickstarter uh, to create this. And oh, they cool. raised the money a couple of years ago and <laughs> did a great job of it. What is this? This is the Smart Things Hub. Got an Ethernet jack, a USB port. Uh, it works on the Wi-Fi, but the key to this is it doesn't just understand the smart things protocol. It understands a lot of other smart things like your Philips Hue lights or your Sonos music player, your drop cam, your Nest, your Schlage locks, your quick set locks. It is the hub that connects all the other Internet of Things devices in your house. And, of course, smart things makes a whole bunch of their own little doohickeys that talk to the smart things hub like the SmartSense Multi, which can tell you when things open or close, when valuable items move, it knows the temperature in the room. This thing, the presence, is awesome. You put this in your kid's backpack, it knows when they come and when they go. Uh, or you put it on keys, and it knows when they come and when they go. Uh, so what happens here is you get started. This is the moisture sensor. This would be great. You put this in the basement, and you know if the you, you could stop a small leak from becoming a major flood. Um, this is, uh, this is uh, the uh, temperature and humidity sensor. The thing to do is to go to smartthings.com slash twit, and you're going to see the solution kits and the home security kits. And that's where you should start because that gives you, know, gives you the sense of, okay, I'm doing this thing, whether it is you know, turning on lights outside when uh, somebody comes in your area or in your motion controller. We're going to save you 10% off of any home security or solution kit. Just use the offer code twit10 at checkout. And by the way, Smart Things just announced they're going to start working with Samsung appliances in 2015. So you can control a refrigerator, a washer, a dryer, an air conditioner. They even have a robotic vacuum. So the Smart Things universe is getting bigger and bigger all the time. They have apps. They're free for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. Yes, Windows Phone. And uh, they work with If This Then That. If you're, a, if you're a developer, you can create new ways to use Smart Things and publish them yourself for everyone to use. You can even trigger the sound of dogs barking on your Sonos when somebody comes in the house. <laughs> All right? That's awesome. All right? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe get a Cyclops. Say, hey, what are you doing in there? I see you with my one eye. <laughs> Smartthings.com <laughs> slash twit. 10% off uh, home security or solution kits. By the way, this would be a great holiday gift uh, for a geek in your life. 
or your spouse who's been saying for a long time, I just wish I could have it. The garage door would come up when I arrive and the lights would come on and the music would come on and my, my uh, coffee pot would start up. Smartthings.com slash twit and use the offer code twit10. You'll save 10%. Warren Jacob is here. He's CEO and founder of Toy Talk, toytalk.com. We've been playing a little bit with Speak a Legend, talking also about your amazing work uh, at Pixar. Uh, you did Finding Nemo, too. That's... Did, did Lucy, Jason, is Lucy a Finding Nemo fanatic? I bet she is. I don't know how many times we've seen it. Yeah, Too many thousands. to count. Yeah. <laughs> over and over. <laughs> Pretty much any times. Pixar. She's, a, she's yeah, an aficionado. Yeah, but there's something about Nemo that kids Yeah, no, like, Nemo connects with completely. I don't know what it is. Is the I guess it's the same thing that Speak a Legend does. There's something about the characters in there that, that particularly speaks to kids. Or maybe it's a story. I don't know what it is. but well, Hopefully all those things, I suppose. All of it, but yeah. Let's talk a little bit about what's going to be going on forward in Toy Talk in the minutes to come. Would yeah, I'd love to, to know what, what you're planning. So I about half an hour ago kind of mentioned the tool set we have internally we call Pull String, which lets us create Speak a Legend in the shows we do. Yeah. So um, we have a... Uh, we announced actually a few weeks ago a relationship with Sesame Street, <gasps> um, formally, and so we are. That's exciting. Yeah, we are partnering with them to uh, research the uh, impacts of speech recognition and language pro language understanding. Um, Children's on television education. workshop. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that that's very cool, and I hope is a uh, sign of things to come with other partners. There are a lot of characters in the world that I think kids want to talk to, and I think that Toy Talk. Um, will really sort of reach its potential as a company if a whole lot of kids are talking to a whole lot of characters and yeah. a bunch of them are ours. But I a bunch of them are this, as well, too, which would be great. in games so. as well, though. Um, I mean, uh, is a, it doesn't have to be just that that thing. It could be part of a part of a larger universe of other th of non-player non entities. Absolutely. That, you know. To get to vocal conversation that way would be also a spectacular reach as well. So, yes. Yeah. Be, um, Hopefully back here, you know, a year from today, we can talk more about. I, I think that's a guarantee. <laughs> I'm really excited. Those developments, but yeah, there's a there's a lot of interest now by other um, you know third-party companies who see what we've yeah. done with our apps as well too, and say, can I make my characters talk back? And well, you have we a, you that. have a data set that is of real value, and uh, now are you you're probably not allowed to kind of sell it to a third party. And I don't. We yeah. I, I asked. the permission I get from parents is to use it to improve our our, our products Your only, stuff. and to build recognition. Speech recognition and natural language processing for, for children, for spoken language. Right. And it's for that express purpose only, which is what we need it for. Right. Good yeah. luck finding it uh, on the iTunes store, as I was mentioning before the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apple doesn't make it easy, but if you search for Toy Talk or Speak a Legend, you'll find it here. It is free, right? Uh, Speak a Legend actually is a $3 download. $3, so okay. Download. Mm -hmm. uh, but Winston is free. Winston's free. Speak is free. Okay. Speak a Legend is $3 and Speaker Tree we did for Halloween. Which is a very fun, fun. jack-o'-lantern barbershop quartet bit that I'm quite a fan of. I really uh, like yeah, that okay. one. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, but this is, it's really worth it. And I think I'd be really interested if your kids use it. Four to eight, you think, is the best age? I think that's about right, yeah. 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 If your kids use it, I'd love to hear uh, what their reaction is uh, to it. You find some kids just go, hmm, eh, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't move me. Um, in Speak a Zoo, that happened for us. In Speak a Legend, because you can both talk and touch, the play pattern is different. Yeah. You get some kids that are... Heavy tappers and want to play with the sheep, build the rocks like and the, the rest of that. My kids always loved that because yeah. they played all those living books. Right, right. From Broderbund. Um, other kids are heavy talkers and they're like, yeah, sheep, whatever. I'm just going to talk to the Cyclops, yeah. take them to the mat. And then some kids in the middle. So I wish they, Henry and Abby were young enough to use this because I'd love, <laughs> I'd love to see what they would do with this. It'd be fun. I want, I need some children, please. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone in the audience can help Leo out with that agenda. No, <laughs> grandchildren will happen soon enough, and that's and by by the time Henry and Abby have grandchildren, I'd be there very you. curious where this technology is gone. Yeah, Warren, it was really great to meet you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Leo. Yeah, ToyTalk.com. Warren Jacob, he's the CEO. You can find out more at ToyTalk.com. Get links to the apps there too. That's the other way you can absolutely do it. for sure. And that makes it perhaps the easiest way to do it. And do you tweet often at Warren Jacob or? Uh, I do upon occasion. Yeah, yeah. and people say hi to me. I'm happy to say hi back as well and Good. talk to them back and forth. Good. Um, and Toy Talk also is an active social media network as well, too. So Twitter and Facebook and Toy Talk as well. Oh, good. All right. If you want to talk to the characters, talk to Toy Talk. If you talk to me, talk to me. But Great. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or get Speak a Legend. Right. They'll talk back to you. <laughs> For as long as you want. Thank you, Aaron. Really nice to meet you. Thanks, Leo. Really appreciate it. We do triangulation every Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC. If you can be here for it live, I really appreciate it because it's, it's only triangulation when we get those great questions from the chat room. But if you can't, don't worry because we make on-demand audio and video available after the fact always at twit.tv slash TRI. 
or you can go to youtube.com slash triangulation. You can get them there. Share, that's a good way to share it if you want to share it with friends. Hey, you got us. If you know somebody with kids that age, send them a link to this because I think they're going to be interested in this. Uh, you can also uh, uh, subscribe. That's probably the best way because every triangulation has something, of, I think, of great interest, of fascination. Uh, last week, we, we talked about landing on Mars and the future of Mars exploration with the guy behind the Curiosity rover. Next week, Ben Heck is our guest. We're going to talk about making and his great show. So there's always something. Triangulation. Find it on your favorite podcatcher and subscribe, and that way you'll get it each and every week. Thanks to Jason Howell, our uh, technical director, and to Karsten Bondi, our producer, for putting together this show. And thanks to you for being here. I'll see you next week on Triangulation. Bye-bye. <laughs>